The Poet's Occasional Alternative. I was going to write a poem. I made a pie instead. It took about the same amount of time, of course. <laughs> of course, the pie was a final draft. <laughs> a poem would have had some distance to go, days and weeks and much crumpled paper. The pie already had a talking, tumbling audience among small trucks and the fire engine on the kitchen floor. Everybody will like this pie. It will have apples and cranberries and dried apricots in it. Many friends will say, why in the world did you make only one? This does not happen with poems. <laughs> Is there any advice that you would, you would give to writers who are, who are just starting out? As I said, the first thing you have to do is, um, is um, um, keep a low overhead. That's really true. I'm not joking about that. And uh, with whomever you live, your uh, wife or husband or sweetheart or whatever, um, they, should be, they should really... Uh, they should have some regard for your work. You think these things are not important, but they really are terribly important in your life as a writer. And the next thing you have to do is learn how to tell the truth all the time. Those are the main things, is to write, is to be truthful, and to be able to look at yourself and see if you're just being trendy. And then you have to really work. You really have to just do it. And if, as you do it, you get, you, you'll get either better or worse. If you get worse, you know you better get out of that business. I thought in terms of poets mostly when I first began writing of Yeats and, you know, poets like mm -hmm. that and Blake. I, I mean, that's what really interested me was poetry more than anything else. As for fiction, I read everything. I mean, I, you know, one of those kids you call a big reader. I think I learned something about storytelling from Joyce, really. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, although although you don't want to use those forms now, you want to do something else. Still, you can learn a, a lot from reading Dubliners to this day, and you certainly can read, learn a lot from Chekhov. I mean, whose forms are much looser than Joyce. You know, you could you just you. In fact, he has such a variety of stories. Chekhov, from the little two pages to thirty-five page stories. I started to write stories because because mainly what I was interested in at that at that first looking moment, which is the moment that carries through a lot of your artistic life, you know, the, the first moment you look, listen, and feel, and that follows you. It was the life of women and children. It is the poet's responsibility to speak truth to power, as the Quakers say. It is the poet's responsibility to learn the truth from the powerless. It is the responsibility of the poet to say many times there is no freedom without justice. There is no freedom without fear and bravery. It is the responsibility of the poet to be a woman, to keep an eye on this world and cry out like Cassandra, but be listened to this time. <laughs> 